So because you understand, you know how things work, you can guide the people that are hired newly. When they make mistakes, you can see because you have been in their shoes before. And Paul is saying, I, I became a good minister because I decided put, to put myself in other people's shoes to understand what they're going through. For me to be able to be a good minister, he is saying that you need to understand. He said, though I am free, because when you become a child of God, you are free, you're no longer bound. You are free from temptations. You are free from bondages. You know, you are free from worldly things. You are no longer bound. You are free. People are doing, the, you know, they're going to clubs, they're drinking, they're buying things, they're going after material things. You're saying, I don't care about those things because you are free. But he is saying, though he is free, he decided to come into bondage. We will see that he's putting himself into other people's shoes. He's saying, I'm becoming a slave. Not a slave. What? He's saying, I'm trying to save souls. I am bound to save souls because of my Father in heaven. He said that I might. He said, yet I made myself servant unto all. You know, when you become servant, right? The master calls you, you say, yes, sir, or yes, ma'am. They say, bring me a cup of water, you bring. Go clean the house, you say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. Paul made himself a servant to win soul. He wants to win all. He put himself under the shoes of other people. So that he might, if you want to become a great minister and a great evangelist, of our Father in heaven, you need to live by example. Because leading by example is putting yourself in other people's shoes. Let's listen now carefully. And unto the Jews, I became a Jew, that I might gain the Jews to them that are under the law, as, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. What is Paul talking about? He says to the Jews, I became a Jew. Is it because that he became, he started Judaism? No. He said to the law, to the ones that are under the law, I am bound by the law also. Is that what he means? Paul is saying that he's putting himself into other people's shoes. If you have a brother or sister in the house of the Lord that is saying, well, I'm poor. I cannot even afford a pair of skirt, a pair of pants, a pair of shirt. Let, let, me, let me step back a little bit. You see a brother or sister who walks into the church and dirty and smelly. And you're like, well, don't sit next to me. This person doesn't even shower. You know, what world are you coming from? Why should you even come? So you, after the church, you go to the brother and sister and start attacking. You know, why, you know, church, you don't come to church dirty. You don't come to church smelling. Why didn't you shower this morning? Paul is saying to the Jews, I became a Jew. To those under the law, I am under the law. The best approach is to say, my brother or sister, good morning. How was your week? How can we help you? How can we make life better for you? Is there something you're going through that we can help with? We had a colleague at work. And um, the past few weeks... You know, he comes to work and he wears the same pair of scrub. And um, he started to smell. He was smelling very bad. Such that they bought um, the auto remover. And they had to spray around. And uh, they had to open a peppermint a bottle to just... So when I went to work, I was like, why do we have auto remover and peppermint uh, open... 
in the open space. And they were like, well, you didn't know about it. You were, you were not around. And uh, this guy has been wearing the same uh, pairs of scrubs. We think that he doesn't wash his scrubs. So I was like, all right, nobody's allowed to talk about it anymore. You need to respect him. And I said, you cannot talk about him anymore. Shut, quiet. We need to stop that. And they said, are you going to talk to him? I said, it's not none of your business what I'm going to do. Respect. Respected his privacy. And we found time to talk to him only to understand that he doesn't have money. He was waiting for his paycheck so that he can buy another pair of scrubs. And this is somebody who only had one pair of khaki pants and two shirts. That's all he has. That's all he has. That's all he has. That's all he has. And we are now trying to provide him with scrubs. He's happy and excited. And he's saying, I'm in the best place that I should be. I'm not being criticized for not having, but I'm being loved for not having. I'm not being criticized for not taking care of myself, but I'm being loved for not taking care of myself. Because why? We put ourselves in his shoes. And that's what Paul is saying. And guess what? You know, guess what? The next day, he went and put those crops in, in the washer machine. Washed it, dried it off. And the next day he came back to work, he was smelling nice. And now the department has decided to provide him with some scrubs. Think about the fact if we had castigated him. If I had said, well, you know, yeah, he smells bad. Ew. And then I start talking about it. And everybody's talking about it. Nobody's controlling it. And then he said, what kind of place is this? I quit my job. Are we putting ourselves in other people's shoes? Amen. The spirit is working on somebody. Amen. Sometimes, see, we preach the word of the Lord and we say, why are we not increasing? I know probably when our pastor hear this message, you say, brother Benjamin will never come to the pulpit again. Why are we not increasing? Are we putting ourselves in other people's shoes? Like I just made the example. You know, Brother Benjamin is always coming to church late. He's a late comer. So why, Brother Benjamin, you didn't come to church quick. And you know this is the work of God. You're a leader in the house of the Lord. You're a leader in the house of so why are you not why are you not coming early? Paul said to the Jews, I became a Jew. And to those under the law, I'm under the law. Have you taken the time to call Brother Benjamin aside and say, Bro, how are you doing today? Is everything okay? Is everything in the home okay? Is there something we can do to help you out? And I'm saying, you know, bro, the spirit talks to me and I say, bro, I know I've been coming late to church. This is what I'm going through. You guys bear with me. I will improve. You know, I have not seen brother Dimitri for a while. I've been trying to ask. I've been trying to ask. I've been forgetting. We'll get home. My wife would, did you ask about brother Dimitri? I'll say, no, I forgot. Are you becoming a Jew? You know, it's not that well to say to the drunkard. I become a drunkard. And then you go and sit in the bar and be drinking beer. No, that is not what Paul is saying. Paul is saying that putting yourselves in the person's shoes and understand. Look, you become a successful minister when you put yourself in other people's shoes. I trained so many young people and put them in medical school at UVA. You know, the reason why, the reason is because that 
I trained as a student and never forgot how I went through school and became who I was. So I could understand. I studied my students as they walk in and see where I can help them to be better. Even now, the people who report to me, I study. I have young people that I mentor. When they're in issues, I come. I have one young boy who he gets anxiety. He gets upset all the time. And I told him, this is good. I will continue to mentor you through because, and he's very smart. He's going, so he, he's going into pharmacy school and said, you go and become, you know, a pharmacy. You have people under you that you supervise. This is the time for you to learn. And he's been learning. He's been learning through coaching. In fact, he's become very good now. He's controlling himself. His anxieties are going away. Because I remember. Do you remember when you became a child of God? How you struggled? All the things you were going through. That is the same thing Paul did. Paul said before I used to persecute Christians. I used to be somebody who never liked Christians. I understand how it is to, 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 to persecute people. So he understands. To the Jews, he became a Jew. To people under the law, he said, I'm under the law. How to become a great minister of God. You know, the Spirit touched a young brother here who said no. May the Lord continue to bless you as you grow in his word. And then he said to them that are without law. I'm going to close soon. I got carried away. Amen. To them that are without law as without law. Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ that I might gain them that are without law. Listen to this carefully. He's talking about the people who do not understand the law. He said, he said this. He said, to them that are without law, as without law he was, being not without law to God. So it means he understood. He's saying, no, I'm not changing I'm not changing who I am. I'm not compromising my faith. But I understand. So you preach to people based on their faith. People who have never heard the Lord before. You know, I was sharing the word of God with uh, uh, um, a, a lady who used to be a professor. She was an atheist. I was sharing the word of God. And she said that... Um, so we spoke at length, and she said, she said, I need to become a Christian. I said, why? She said, because I could talk to her at her own level. She understands. She understands where I'm coming from. Every time you need to study who you are preaching to, who you are ministering to, you see somebody on the street who is hungry, and you are giving tracts, and you are preaching the word of God. You are saying, my bro and sister, how are you doing today? How is your day? I'm hungry. You, you give a dollar or, you, you know, you give a food to the person and the person is eating and say, God bless you. And then you begin to share the word of God. I know, why are you on the street? You look healthy. Why are you not working? Why are you standing at the corner here? The other time, a few years ago, I went to a tea meeting here in Charlottesville with brothers and sisters. And they were talking about, they asked me, those people who stand on the street, do you give them? I said, yes, if I have a dollar, I'll give it to them. But I said, I should have given that dollar to them together with a tract and a little Bible for them, put it inside and give it to them. They said, why? Those people make money than uh, you because they collect this money, they don't make tax, stop giving, and they're not going to work. And we say we're the children of God. They, are, they tell me they're able bodies. Why are we not? How can you get through to them? How can you be a good minister when you refuse to put yourself in their shoes? Find out where they're coming from. Mentor them through 
and take them from the street onto a better place. How can you be a minister of God in two, three minutes? I'll be done. My time is well spent. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> verse 22. 1 Corinthians 9, verse 22. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. To the weak, I became weak. You know, I see a brother or sister walking to the church, into the church who is uh, today backsliding, tomorrow coming back to the Lord, next tomorrow backsliding. And I go straight and say, you're not, a, you're not born again. You need to be born again. Or I go to the brother and sister, the Lord has made me understand. And I say, bro, or my sister, can I pray with you? Or you see the sister and you hand the sister over to another sister. Say, can you please pray with her? And then they pray and you say, well, Brother Benjamin said, the Lord had laid this in his heart to pray with you. You know, is there a particular prayer request that you have that we can pray together with? Let's be in agreement. Because our Father in heaven says, where two or three are gathered in his presence and have agreed. Everything that's agreed here on earth is agreed in heaven. What is bound in heaven and down here is bound in heaven. What we lose here is losing in heaven. And then the brother or sister begins to share with you their problems. And their issues. Why today, you know, today they're hot, tomorrow they're lukewarm. Next tomorrow, to the weak I became weak. To the weak are you become weak? Or do you abuse your power like Paul said? He refused to abuse his power. <coughs> because you're consistently strong in the Lord, and then you see, uh, you see that sister. That they are weak, they are all weak. They cannot pray. You know, they cannot even sit in church without sleeping. They cannot sing. And they are just, look at even how they are dressed. How, what's wrong with these people? Are they even born again? Paul said to the weak, I became weak. That's what makes it successful. See, the reason why I don't read any other book but the Bible is because of the fact that I don't have to read any book. I don't. I'm serious. I can go through with you in the Bible and tell you the wisdom that I have gained. I'll continue to thank my, 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 my earth father, my earthly father and my siblings for giving me the privilege to know the Lord. I'll continue to say that because they've given me wisdom, so much knowledge that is own. Nobody can take it away. My colleague that I gave the Bible to, he talks to me about the scriptures. He's reading about this person. He says now, he said, I'm 10 times smarter than I was. I used to read all those books, but it never worked. He said he was told that the greatest book that has ever been written is the Bible. And now he agrees. You know, we talk about the scriptures and he asks questions and we talk about things. And I, I tell him to relate. He relates the scriptures to the world. I'll finish right now. I can keep going on for three hours. I'll stand here and be preaching about that. You know what we discuss? We discuss about sparing the uh, the, the whip and uh, cane and uh, spoiling the child. And I said to him, do you know that uh, that is not literally like, you know, uh, whipping the child is not the only... He said he understands. I said, why? He said... He said, uh, Brother Benjamin, let me tell you something. I had a tough discussion with my wife this morning. He said to me that uh, he wanted to leave, but he said he cannot spare, he cannot spare uh, the rod and spoil the child. They had the tough discussion and the fight. You know, he read that scripture and he said, as if I saw it, he said they had the fight. And he said after that he felt good. He said he felt good because it's like if you live, so it's the same thing with siblings, your parents, you know, your children. 
at work. I used to be the kind of person that I never liked. I don't like drama. That's me. I don't like drama at all. At work, I was confronted with holding people accountable. I will go because I don't like drama, but I had to do it. I had to do it because things were falling apart. Things were falling apart. It's either I do it or I get fired. It's either I do it or I get, I'll be on the street. Then I remember the scriptures. That's like we discussed. And I said, the Bible, that was when it revealed to me, the Lord revealed to me that scriptures. He said, I'm not going to spare the rod and spoil the child. I'm going to go head on. And guess what? Within two weeks, sorry, within two weeks, everything changed for better. Things completely turned around. Things completely turn around. So that is why I love the Bible. Amen? Read the Bible. You will not want to read any book. And then I'll close. <clears throat> he said, verse 23, And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. And he said, Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one received the prize. So run. Paul says what? So run. Amen? So do what? Run. That they may obtain. Amen? And finally, he says, if you run, if you run that race, <clears throat> if you live by example, this is what Paul said. He said, and every man that striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown. Amen? People who strive in the world, but we in the house of the Lord, what do we do? But we, an incorruptible prize, me and you, are running for. You're running the race to win incorruptible prize. Do you want to be a successful minister of our Lord Jesus Christ? Do you want to be a great evangelist of our Lord Jesus Christ? You want to be like Paul? You have to lead by example. You have to put yourself in every other person's shoes. You have to see what Paul has said. To the Jews, I became a Jew. I want you to read that. I want you to meditate on it. To those under the law, I put myself under the law. To the weak, I became weak. But listen. Paul said that he did not, even though he was putting himself in other people's shoes, said to the weak, I became weak. But he said that he did not compromise his faith. Think about that. You know, you see somebody smoking cigarette, you know, saying, go and smoke cigarette with the person so that you want to preach to the person. Or somebody drinking alcohol. No. He's saying that, remember. Remember how difficult it is. How difficult it was for you to become a child of God. How you struggled as a child of God to the weak in our midst. How you struggle. Remember. To the poor that are in our midst. To those who don't have. Remember when you did not have. Even if you were born into riches, think about people who don't have. See how they suffer. Put yourselves in their shoes and bring them to the house of the Lord. May our pastor close with a word of prayer. Let us rise up to pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, we glorify your name. We thank you, Lord, once again for coming on to us. We thank you, Lord, speaking to our hearts, Lord. We thank you, Lord, because You have decided within your mind that you are going to use us and you are leading us to a destination that is unimaginable. Father, we pray. As you are teaching us by the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, we are going to surrender our will and your will will take over our life totally in Jesus' name. Almighty, we pray. By the power in the blood of Jesus Christ, all these messages will not stand against us in the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Father, not only in the kingdom of God. Father, 
let us able to make use of them in this world to the extent that through this many people will be converted and come into your kingdom in jesus name father for the strong you have used for that you continue to empower him in the name of jesus christ the inner eyes you give to every one of us in the name of jesus christ and the eternity no one among us shall miss it in jesus name thank you for loving us for feeding us with all these bones we pray by the power in the blood of jesus christ they will continue to make us strong in the journey to the kingdom of god in jesus name thank you lord because you are the lord and answer prayer in jesus name we pray let's share the grace together may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the fellowship of holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life and we shall continue to dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen thank you all god bless you i think today is on the 28th i know brother benjamin is rushing home that's good <laughs> because of your walking uh brother Stephen, maybe come and take over you pray for my child today is somebody asked me you know uh, somebody's no i was the one that even said it my house shall be full of joy the, through this month it has been celebration of by the by the by the by the uh, on my facebook it is well <laughs> so rasim please come and take over it is well Praise the Lord. Quickly, in the next few minutes, let's stretch our hands towards Him and begin to decree blessings, positive. And as He grow, He will grow in strength, physically, mentally, spiritually, and otherwise. As the Bible, Jesus made us to understand that we are the light of the world, that He will shine as a light to His generation, that His light will not be hidden under the bushel, but it will be placed on the mighty top to give light to many, to His equals. In Jesus' name we're praying. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another year that you've added, O oh God, to the life of your son, Akimomi. Father, Lord, I pray that as he's growing, O oh God, in years, as he's adding in age, each second, in every area of his life will be an addition in Jesus' name. No subtraction. Father, I decree, O oh Lord, that you will make him, O oh God, that he will leave, O oh God, a landmark and a shining light in his generation in Jesus' name. Father, as he grow in you, Lord, your world will continue to be in his heart. That he will grow, O oh God, in the fear and honor of you. Father, to his parents, O oh God, to, to everyone around, O oh God, he, he will be a pride, O oh God, to them. And at the end of God, when we look, O oh God, unto him, Father, we will say of a truth that you have done something great and marvelous. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. 